Hi, this is Max Messenger from Lynn Aerospace, and uh, this is the first uh, video in our Using Mission Planner video series. So, in this video, I'm going to go over the basics of Mission Planner, a little bit about um, monitoring the aircraft while it's in the air, and uh, then a little bit about flight planning. And then later on in the series, we will go into more detail about both of those things. So right here is the um, sort of home screen, if you will, of Mission Planner. Uh, this is what you will see the first time you open it. Uh, the map on the right over here will not be of the same area. I've zoomed in on uh, a, a field that is typically our base of operation when we fly. But um, this is the flight data window. So you see that indicated up there at the upper left. And in this window, we have a lot of functionality that we will use in flight. So here in the upper left is the HUD or heads up display. So you can see there's a lot of information that's going to be displayed here. Most apparently is an artificial horizon. So this indicates our pitch and roll. Uh, we have over here on the left an airspeed indicator, and then airspeed and ground speed are also indicated numerically below that. On the right, we have an altitude indicator. Uh, and then over here where we have unknown, when we're connected to an aircraft, that will indicate the current flight mode. This right here will indicate the distance to a waypoint number and we'll talk about that more uh, later on in the series. Up in the upper right, uh, we see the signal strength of the telemetry modules. Along the top, we have a compass heading. Here we have uh, an indicator to tell us whether or not we have a GPS fix. And then when we're connected to an aircraft, down here on the bottom left, we'll get battery information. Over to the right, you can see this is some nice aerial imagery that is served into the software. This is from Google Earth um, and you can actually change the imagery source. You can use Bing Maps, Google Maps, uh, Yahoo, any of those providers. You can use aerial imagery, you can use terrain, you can use street maps. What I have selected here is the Google hybrid map. Um, so you can see there's road overlays on the uh, satellite imagery and we'll talk more about how to change that sort of thing in a little bit. And then finally down here at the bottom left we have probably the most useful portion of the flight data screen. So in this tab, the quick tab, we get a little bit of basic information that is sometimes useful to us. Um, I don't typically spend much time in this tab. The one thing that can be really nice is this dist to mav value. That is the actual distance from where the aircraft took off. So you can see very quickly uh, a number in meters of how far away your aircraft is. If you click over to the actions tab, this is going to be really useful to us when we're in flight. Uh, we, can, we can control a lot of things about the aircraft from right here. First of all, these three buttons down the middle are flight mode buttons. We can change into auto loiter and return to launch flight modes. And then if we click on this drop down box right here, we have all of the other flight modes available to us, uh, like our fly by wire A mode that we use sometimes, cruise, which can be useful uh, in a patrol type mission and uh, manual, which is typically going to be most useful for testing. So we can select a mode there and we can click set mode and that will set the mode of the aircraft. Um, we can also do things like change waypoints, arm and disarm the aircraft, change its speed and altitude, and we'll go over all of that um, later in the video series, but this is probably the most important place for you to familiarize yourself uh, if you're going to be the computer operator while the aircraft is in the air. Okay, so now we'll go over to the 
other uh, window that we're going to talk about, which is the flight plan window. Um, this is, as the name might suggest, where we're going to make flight plans, and it's pretty straightforward for us to do that. Um, and, in, and later on, we will get into a lot more advanced functionality with the flight planning. But for now, I'm just going to show you the basic functionality of this window so that um, you have a little bit of the basics for doing some of the more advanced stuff. So you see that we have uh, the same aerial imagery that we saw in the flight data screen. We just have a little bit bigger uh, display here. We have a little H right here which indicates the home position. Uh, so the home position is actually going to be reset when the aircraft is armed. So when you arm the motors of the aircraft, it's going to set its own home position. So the home position we see here is somewhat arbitrary, but it can be nice for giving us an idea of where our flight plan is. We can set this while we're doing a flight plan uh, from we can set this where we think we will be taking off and landing and that can help us make that flight plan. Down here if we click on these two little arrows we'll bring up this waypoints menu. So this once we start to create a flight plan is where we will see each waypoint as a line item here. We have a little bit of other information here. A waypoint radius and the default altitude. I'll talk about the waypoint radius later, um, but I'll just say for now that 40 is a good value to have this set to. And the default altitude is just that. It's the uh, altitude that will that all of your waypoints will be set to unless you change them to something else. So if I were to create a waypoint right now, by default it would be created at 150 meters. So let's go ahead and do that. I can click anywhere in the map up here and we create a waypoint. We have waypoint one and when I hover over it you see that we have an altitude of 150. And if we zoom in you will see these circles and these represent that waypoint radius of 40 meters. Now what that waypoint radius means is that as the aircraft is flying from home to waypoint one when it reaches this radius it will determine that this waypoint has been completed and it will start flying to waypoint 2. So the smaller the radius the closer it will get to the waypoint before it turns and the farther away the sooner it will turn. This is helpful in really windy situations where the aircraft may drift off track some and we're still able to complete that waypoint without circling back around and it's also useful because it gives us a sort of almost predictive ability to turn um, and cut this corner and stay closer in line with the flight plan. We can create a few more waypoints and so now we have a nice little uh, five waypoint flight and what I mean by staying closer to those lines is if we fly here if we fly all the way to waypoint 2 and fly through that, it will turn out here, the, the aircraft will, and then return to the line. If we turn when we break this circle, uh, it gives us a little more predictive ability and we'll track this line much better. And so each of these waypoints you can see have now showed up, shown up down here and we can get that little drag handle and we can make this a little bigger and now we can see all of our waypoints. So we have uh, a command which in this case is waypoint. If you click that you see you get a lot of other options. Ones we'll talk about later are land, takeoff, um, do set servo is one that we will use right here and do set camera trigger distance. These are all things that we're going to use later on. And we also have a latitude and longitude, position of the waypoint, and an altitude. We have a button to delete the waypoint, and then we have buttons right here to change the order of them. So we can click down, and you can see that waypoint 1 became waypoint 2, 
and waypoint 2 became waypoint 1. We can change it back by clicking right there to change the order. We have a gradient in percent which is indicating the uh, steepness of a climb or descent between two waypoints. So if we change waypoint 2, these are all 0 right now because um, all the waypoints are at 150, but if we change this to 200, so now waypoint 2 is at 200 meters, and we can see that we have a 24.4% climb to get to waypoint 2, and then we have a 28.7% descent to get to waypoint 3. That will become important later in our flight planning uh, because we want to keep those values as low as we practicably can um, because steep climbs and steep descents are not good for the efficiency of our aircraft. Okay, uh, a few other things. I mentioned you can change the map source. If we click this drop down right here, we see lots and lots and lots of map options. Um, we can select any of these, and like I said, we have Google Map, which is just streets and uh, features, Google Satellite, Google Hybrid, and Google Terrain. Um, so you can see there's terrain relief added in here now. I typically use Hybrid because it gives me the best ability to discern uh, where the flight plan is. Um, up here, in the upper right, we have a latitude, longitude, and an elevation in meters. This elevation in meters is terrain elevation based on Google Earth uh, terrain data, which is derived from the shuttle radar topography mission. So um, it's a 90 meter elevation data set. Um, so it's not super accurate, but it's plenty good for pretty much all of our flight planning purposes. So if we, for example, want to know how much terrain changes in elevation across uh, the ground here. We can hover over home and up in the upper right we see that uh, right here it's 226.64 meters above sea level. That's not going to change a whole lot as we go out toward the river because this is a nice flat field. If we drop down to the river we still don't have much of a elevation change. This is all floodplain. And then if we go back up the hill here, you will see that we're climbing up 250, 260 meters. And this is important to us when we're making flight plans that we want to follow terrain. We have to take into account that uh, terrain height change through there. Um, if you're more comfortable working in UTM, you can click this drop down right here, select UTM, we get uh, a zone identifier and then XY and uh, still the same elevation data. And then finally one last thing that we have to do pretty much every time before we go fly unless you like using a lot of cellular data to download aerial imagery is prefetch image data sets. So if we want to go out and fly this flight plan um, we want this imagery to be present behind here so that we can have an idea for of where the aircraft is and if we were to go out and fly uh, we wouldn't have access to the internet we wouldn't have access to this google imagery and uh, we would just have a, a blank screen behind this flight plan so we can hold down the alt key and click and drag and we get a blue box and then let go of the Alt key and we can right click and scroll down to map tool and then click prefetch and it will ask if you're ready to rip the imagery and you'll click yes and a series of these windows will pop up um, prefetching this imagery typically when it reaches see we're at zoom level 18 right now Typically, I'm getting much larger areas than this, um, and because of that, this can become very time-consuming because as you see, the number of tiles that we have to fetch increases uh, quite a lot um, between each zoom layer. So once I get to a sufficient zoom layer, usually zoom 16, we can just hit the escape key 
and make these go away just repeatedly hit the escape key until they stop showing up uh, because below about zoom 16 you really don't get any increased image quality so we'll just escape out and we're good to go and uh, one last little bit of uh, helpful information for our flight planning is up here at the upper left we have distance, previous, and home. Previous isn't particularly useful but distance and home really are. So home is the distance in meters of the cursor from the home position. So we can see if we go here we're 4.3 and if we go out to the river we're about half a kilometer uh, away from home. And distance is the distance of the flight plan. So this is a 1.1 kilometer flight plan. If I create another waypoint, uh, we see that jumps up to 2.15 with this waypoint out here. Um, so that is really helpful to us when we're creating flight plans. Uh, once you have a good idea for how far your aircraft can fly on a single battery, uh, having this distance right here will be really helpful to you in making flight plans that will get the most out of every flight and also not uh, not try to get too much and cause you to have to abort the flight and come back and land um, before you're finished. So okay uh, that's it for this one. Um, I will be back in the next video to show you some more advanced flight planning we will get into planning takeoff and landing, and then we will get into making plans with uh, grids to conduct surveying. And then in the video after that, we will look at some more advanced surveying. We will look at how to survey uh, multiple areas, multiple discrete areas in one flight, um, how to overlay two grids over top of each other, and uh, a few other uh, really helpful things uh, in flight planning. Alright, well, that is it for this video and thank you for watching.